Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Okay, today we're going to talk about fire sets. Now, everybody knows what a fire is, but how you build your fire has an impact on what the use of that fire is. Now, let me explain. Do I want a quick fire that's just for heating up a little bit of chow or coffee? Do I want a fire that's predominantly for light and heat? Do I want a fire that's predominantly for coals and cooking, okay? Or do I want a long-term fire, something that I'm wanting to generate heat for the long term, like all night? Those are four completely different types of fire, and each one has a little different setup. Now, you can morph from one to the other, but let's talk about what each one of these types of fires has an advantage of. Now, I'm going to turn the camera down. I'm going to do a fire set. And I'm going to show you how to lay out these different fire sets. So okay. Stay with me. First fire we're going to talk about is the cooking fire. A very quick and simple way to heat up some chow. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay a V. Something like this. Then I'm going to take various size sticks. And I'm going to lay them one on top of the other just like this like you're building one corner of a log cabin. Just like that. I'll do that till I get it about the height I want. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my smalls and I'm going to come over the top right here with it. Just like this. Now, into this hollow I've created right here is where I'm going to put my tender material. That way when it ignites, the heat goes straight up and ignites these twigs. As they go to burning, they wrap around the V fire into here. Now, why we're going okay, to use the V? Why we're using the V is so that I can take my cooking vessel and do this and put it into it. Now the heat is surrounding on three sides this way with leaving the handles out here at the coolest part. Once these get going, they're gonna radiate a lot of ambient heat back to it. And relatively quickly, I'm gonna be able to heat up the chow or bring water to boil, etc. It's easy for me to also pull it straight out of the fire, stir whatever, and put back in. Now this fire is not gonna burn very long. Its intention is to burn 10, 20 minutes, just long enough to heat up some chow and then move on. So by the time I'm done eating, it's dried out and I can go on. Okay. So the V fire is our quick cooking fire. It's not meant to be long term. It's only done with smalls and relatively small wood. And it's only meant to last 10 to 20 minutes. Something to heat up chow and then be out. So that when I get done eating, it's out. I can completely make sure it's completely dead and then move on. The next fire we're going to talk about is a cooking fire. And this fire is going to be created by laying down sticks in parallel like this and then putting a couple of sticks crossways like this. Onto this, I'm going to put my smalls like that. Up under here into this hollow right here is where I'm going to put my tender material so that when I put my smalls up here on top and I want a lot of air in here, just loosely thrown up here on top, when I insert the fire from down here underneath, it's going to go up through these sticks. It's going to bring them quickly up to temperature and get it to cooking. Now, a problem that you're going to find with doing this type of thing is you're going to want to smother it. You're going to want to put too much up here. Don't. Get your kindling and your tinder in this center section going and then just randomly drop a big loose pile of smalls on top. You can add more as it comes up to temp, as the flames get above the fuel. Now as these are consumed, you're going to end up with a bed of coals in this area, right here. As it is burned, you're going to add more firewood to this and scoot the logs inward as the coals increase. This will end up being a cooking surface right here 
where I can put my pot or whatever on top like so. As these two sticks are burned and becomes consumed, I can simply add another stick out here on the side or whatever and simply move the pot over as the sticks are moved. So I'm constantly will be adding in my new cooking stick, so to speak, my range stick. This is quite often called a range set because it produces a relatively stable cooking platform that I can put a pot on or whatever and have a fire underneath with plenty of oxygen flow. That's what these base logs or dogs are doing. They're creating an airflow underneath to allow oxygen um, into the fire core and keep the coals gl glowing. So the cooking pot on top has complete encompassing of the heat column and it's also easily repaired, fixed by, as it burns out, move around and add another one. You don't have to lose a lot of heat this way by just doing a couple of quick shift overs and ah, a couple of sticks, it's a little odd here. You know, move them back into position and put the pot on. If you want to simmer, you just move it off to the side a little bit further. You can move your base logs a little further out, your sitting sticks a little further out, and keep the hot coals going here. This is called a rain set. Now, if all I'm interested in is I want light. I'm done with cooking. I'm wanting a campfire that's gonna produce a lot of light with warmth. That's gonna be a teepee fire. Now, when most fires you lay a log or your fuel sideways like this, as the heat is applied to it and the gases are exuded out of the material, they come up. Burning gases produce flames. Non-burning gases are smoke. That's the gases that have been forced out of the wood that have not combusted. So, if I turn the stick upwards, now all these gases are flowing up through the fire column and it's a much greater opportunity for them to combust than this way because this way it's only one side straight up. You have a narrow fire along the top. This way you can have a 360 fire going up. So, unlike the other fire, now I'm gonna start with probably a base log, okay? To this, I'm going to put like two small leans, and this is to create an air gap in here, okay? Into here, I'm gonna put my tender. Then on top of this, I'm going to generate all my smalls. Now my fire, will, my ignition, my match or whatever will come under here. It'll come into this. As it begins to burn, I will continue to add more and more smalls to it, building it up as I go until I get a pretty good pile of smalls and my column of flame is on up like this. Then I will start standing up logs and fuel like this into the area, okay? It helps to have a couple of notch ones like this at the beginning where you can just simply stand them up, hook them together, whatever you need to do to get it going. But stand it up, start adding your vertical fuel like this. And we keep standing up higher and higher, leaning them always back toward each other like this to generate our set. Now in doing this, what I'm doing is I'm creating more of a vertical set. And as these flames ignite this main fuel, my flames get higher and higher, thus producing what I'm wanting, light with heat. This is a good campfire that's predominantly not for cooking. You can roast stuff out of the, here at the side. If you've got a reflector oven over here, this type of fire is better. You'll hear the term a lot of times in the old works of a bright fire, B-R-I-G-H-T. This is what they're talking about. We mo in modern times call it a teepee fire because of the Boy Scouts, but it means that you've built it up into a tall column of wood and therefore it's generating a lot of light and a lot of reflective heat. If you're using a, a packer or one of the folding uh, cookers or you know like the aluminum foil uh, the aluminum foil baker that I showed a couple of videos ago this is the type of fire you want to put in front of it so that I can throw heat and light in there and finally 
the last one we're going to talk about is the one that everybody thinks of when they're thinking about an official firewood set, and that's the log cabin. Now, the log cabin simply utilizes base logs or base fuel sat into a repeating pattern like this, each pattern laying on top of the one below, getting slightly narrower as it goes up. Now, once you get about two layers like this, I like to take and put a few layers of my smalls across as tender fuel through here. Now, the whole object of the game here is I'm going to make a very airy fire that's going to reduce quickly to coals, and then the coals are going to drop into the center section. Okay? So as you can see, I'm going to just make a layer across here at the top. Then I'll go more, and I keep stacking up my sides of my log cabin, getting higher and higher each time until I get to the top. Now what this is going to produce is, this will generate a fast burning fire that's going to reduce quickly to coals and they're going to drop into the center section. By putting two fairly large base logs on either side, I can now rake and scoop those coals out here into this area. It allows me to cook, if I want to cook strictly on coals, I'm simmering, I'm doing it slow over a long time. I've got this I can keep constantly adding wood to and raking coals out from underneath to create a coal fire over here at the side. Quite often this will be utilized in a keyhole fire. Now what a keyhole fire is, is another type of cooking fire. We have our base fire area and then we'll have a trench or something and a coal cooking area over here. So this produces light and it produces coals and then here I've got a controlled cooking area. If you're cooking you usually want coals unless you're just boiling water. So it's a constant producer. I just keep adding wood and raking coals out of the bottom over here to produce my cooking fire. So, in short, the different types of cooking fires don't get a lot of glamour, you know, in, in videos these days. People just tend to build a generic fire. It's a pile of this, a pile of that, and I do whatever. In the past, the woodsmen knew that each fire had a different use, and they built it to conserve fuel, conserve resources, and to be the most efficient for the job required. Now, there are even other types of fires for heating, like the Siberian log fire or the long fire. We'll get into those later when it gets to winter, and we're actually doing some camping, and I'll go ahead and build these and show you how they work. But for right now, what you need to understand is a... V fire is the quick fire. I'm just doing something on the side of the trail. A TP fire is for light, it is for heat, and it's the good one to use with reflector ovens. The log cabin fire is the best for generating coals with a keyhole fire so that I can rake out coals and maintain a constant cooking temperature over here. Especially if I'm running something like a Dutch oven or something like that, then I'm going to keep needing a supply of coals for long-term cooking. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And if there's something you'd like me to expound upon and explain a little better, please let me know. Till next time, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.